Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today I have a sovereign citizen who is batshit crazy and apparently likes to play with himself in public. So there's your warning and let's dive into the video. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Calling I case number 2401173SM. This is the people of the state of Michigan versus Len Derek Tyler Stringer. Uh, Mr. Angott, do you wish to place an appearance on the record? Judge John Angott, I'm here um, as appointed counsel for Mr. Stringer regarding this arraignment. However, Mr. Stringer does not acknowledge or consent to this hearing. Is that correct, Mr. Stringer? I do not identify. I identify as the beneficiary that is here to protect the Derek Stringer. Very well, Mr. Stringer. The court is going to read the charge into the record since the formal reading is not waived. Mr. Stringer, it is charged by the people of the state of Michigan that in this city, Royal Oak, County of Oakland, and state of Michigan, on or about June 16th of 2024, you did knowingly make an open or indecent exposure of your person while fondling your dolls in a public area, contrary to the statute so made and provided at Michigan Compile Law 750.335A, subparent 2, subparent B. The court advises you that this is referred to as a Tier 1 offense under the Sex Offender Registry Act. If the victim is a minor, it is a Tier 2 offense. If you have a prior conviction for a Tier 1 offense, it is a Tier 3 offense. If you have a prior conviction for a Tier 2 offense, this is a high misdemeanor punishable by up to two years in the state prison and up to $2,000. Also, a mandatory collection of DNA identifying profiling samples. There is a count two misdemeanor in that on the same date, you did knowingly make an open or indecent exposure of your person contrary to the statute so made and provided at Michigan Compile Law 750.335A, subparent 2, subparent A, commonly known as indecent exposure. At this time, the court enters not guilty pleas on both of these matters so that Mr. Stringer's presumption of innocence under the constitutions of Michigan and the United States are preserved? Sir, excuse me, sir. You have not talked to my beneficiary yet. You have not talked to the person who owned the estate yet. I wonder, is the person that's the beneficiary of the state the same person that's played with themselves in public? Who is being disrespectful and loud and doesn't respect the judge? because if that's a beneficiary of the state, I wouldn't want to talk to him either. Like, no, I'm sorry. Mr. Angott, um, the court is making a notation of court appointed counsel to run through the IDSO office and that new counsel as appointed by Mr. Mena can make whatever judgments they wish to make and make any motions they wish to make at Mr. Stringer's first probable cause conference. Mr. Stringer, this matter is now being set for a probable cause conference. That will be on a new date. The law entitles you to what they refer to as a preliminary examination within 21 days of this arraignment today. If probable cause is either found or waived at that preliminary examination, this uh, the, the matter will be bound over to the Oakland County Circuit Court for further arraignment, trial, and proceedings. The court must now set bond in this manner. It's not intended to prejudge or punish you. You are presumed innocent, Mr. Stringer. However, the court must set bond in order to ensure your reappearance to court and afford any necessary protection for the public. In that regard, um, the court would first hear from Detective Keith Baringa of the Royal Police Department. Then the court would hear from your attorney, Mr. Stringer. Detective Baringa, please proceed. Thank you. Personal bond. He currently has two warrants out of the state of Texas for assault and um, also uh, in assault with injury to family violence uh, out of Texas. He also has a lengthy criminal history out of Texas going from as recent of these warrants, which were entered last year, back to around 2015, uh, receiving charges for evading arrest and detention, uh, unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon, uh, assault, family, house member, impeding breath or circulation. 
a s several other assault charges, a weapons charge, and then also like falsifying uh, information or government documents. I'm not sure if that's just like a generic false ID case or not, but uh, multiple felons out of Texas. I'm not sure how long he's been in Michigan. He has no current um, cases out of Michigan that I'm aware of. His criminal history, he has a uh, assault from 2019 out of Parker Woods, which looks like it was deferred as uh, assaulting a public officer or obstructing uh, where he got served nine days ago. And that is it out of Michigan. Anything further? I would also ask that he not be allowed to return to any uh, public or private pools in the city of Pueblo or parks, grass areas adjacent to the Wow, like what a lengthy history. Like firearms, being a felon, like hit violence even played with himself in public, exposing himself in public, like to stay away from schools and pools and just Chuck E. Cheese's and you know, just anywhere. And that's, it's pretty bad. I think it's like, I never want to judge someone, but he seems like somebody that needs to be locked up for all the bad things is just no good, you know, and we don't need that in this world. We want our kids safe. Thank you very much. Mr. Anga. Judge, as noted by the court, the presumption of innocence is absolute at this point. And so we must start from there. Mr. Stringer or the person uh, purporting to represent Mr. Stringer is a business owner. Um, judge, Despite the fact of these charges and what was listed by the detective, I believe that with the GPS tether, that certainly would give this court, pretrial services, and other any other entity overseeing Mr. Stringer during the pendency of this matter, uh, notice of where he would be within three feet, is my understanding, with that tether. I don't think a cash bond is necessary. I would ask the court to give him a personal bond with the GPS tether. Like being a defense attorney would be super hard, especially if you had a client that there's not much you could really say about because of like what they've done. Um, I give so much credit to this attorney. I mean, in my opinion, I feel like he did great. He did and said what he could for this client who like clearly is a sovereign and the things he's done and his late, like lengthy freaking history. So um, it would be hard to be a defense attorney, but in my opinion, I feel like he did a good job and he, he did what he could. He said what he could. Thank you very much. The following conditions will apply to Mr. Stringer's release. Mr. Stringer will appear for all his future dates as directed. He will abide any valid order or judgment entered in this case. Mr. Stringer, you will not leave the state of Michigan without permission of the court. Please don't commit any crimes while you're on release status. You will notify the court in writing of any change of address, telephone, or email. Mr. Stringer will be making reports to pretrial services, and they will supervise his release. There will be no use of alcohol, marijuana, or any other controlled substance without a valid prescription from a treating physician, and Mr. Stringer will abide a substance abuse testing and monitoring program. No purchase or possession of a firearm or other deadly weapon. Mr. Stringer shall not harass, intimidate, beat, wound, or threaten Linda Marino, and Chad Stransky, nor will he cause through himself or through any third party to have direct or indirect contact with said individuals. Mr. Stringer will not enter the cities of Royal Oak or Berkeley except for court, work, or medical treatment. Uh, and at this time, um, there will be two ETGs per week for control uh, alcohol consumption and 
three controlled substance tests a month. Given everything that's before the court at this time, the court will set bond in the amount of $50,000 cash or surety, no 10% allowed at this time. If Mr. Stringer wishes to bring various motions before the examining judge, and that could include a motion to modify his bond, that is his right and his privilege, but at this time, that is the bond as set by this court. Mr. Stringer, that concludes your arraignment, sir. So I don't have, I can't, I can't get out on a personal bond. That's correct, Mr. Stringer. You cannot get out on a personal bond. Fifty thousand cash or surety, with the appropriate conditions that were already listed by the court. That completes your arraignment, sir. Sir, so what, what, what is going on with, with the? What is going on? Right now? I'm sorry, sir. I'm being charged. I'm charged. Can you please move up so the court could hear you? I said, how do you charge a dead entity, sir? I'm sorry, say that again? How do you charge a dead entity, sir? And it just, you it, it, just, it just happened right before your eyes. The so court has the, jurisdiction sir? over you, sir. So, Venue and jurisdiction have been established by sworn testimony. That completes your arraignment. Problem. Good luck to you. So we're about to go to war. Okay, now we're moving on to his next hearing, and let's see how he behaves at this one uh, uh len stringer 2401173 good morning your honor samira malus on behalf of the people good morning judge for the record david m sanutko appearing on behalf of mr stringer all right mr stringer state your name i don't i don't acknowledge myself as len Derek stringer i'm a living entity well i had high hopes for him I really did, but you know, he let me down. <sighs> he don't go by that name, Judge. He's a beneficiary, okay? Okay. Okay, is there an, another name that you go by, sir? The living entity, I'm the beneficiary, so I go as a job. And I want to find her that counsel. I don't want her. All right, so um, there's, there's a, a number of things to unpack here. All right, so let's let's walk through this. Um, I have an individual before me um, that is uh, listed as an Oakland County Jail inmate by the name of Len Stringer. Uh, I have a case uh, that's been uh, assigned to this court that uh, where the defendant's name is Len Stringer. Uh, Mr. Sanuko, you were uh, are you assigned on this case? I am, Judge. Okay, Mr. And you were assigned to the Stringer case, correct? Uh, that's correct, Judge. Okay, so that's enough for me to to conduct this hearing today. Um, now let's walk through this, um, Miss Miss uh, Mount Lewis. Um, have you provided discovery to Mr. Sanuko? Your Honor, I didn't have an attorney listed. Um, I'm gonna. I believe he, if he filed, he may have just received written discovery. Um, I didn't have that in my information, but give me one second to confirm. I'm just gonna make one click. In the meantime, I do um, have written discovery, Judge. So, yeah, it sees that he was provided with written discovery on June 26th. Okay, so, Mr. Sanuko, have you had a chance to talk to um, the defendant at all? I did, Judge. I met with him at the Oakland County Jail. All right, and so... On Tuesday. So, so, did he make it known to you that he wished to uh, no longer proceed with your services? Judge, we, we discussed the case fully, and I had a lengthy phone call with one of his relatives, and it was my intention to ask the court to refer this to the forensic center for a competency evaluation. I do so, think it, I do think that uh, given your uh, experience and then your connection with him as well as a family member, plus the way the defendant has presented today, uh, that uh, a competency review is in order. Um, and so I'm I'm happy to move forward with that. Um, so, Mr. Stringer, there is. Just so you understand, there there has been some um, preliminary information that suggests that you may not be competent to uh, proceed at this particular time. Whether that's a correct assertion uh, is is basically a, a decision that can only be made after uh, an investigation is done to determine whether or not you can uh, that you understand the nature of the proceedings that you can assist your attorney. We need to find those things out. Uh, and so, uh, Ms. Mont-Lewis, can you prepare an order for competency review? 
Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, I agree. I think that that's appropriate at this time. Um, I, I, I recognize that the defendant has made a request um, to have Mr. Sunuko uh, removed from the case based on the information, though, that I've uh, sort of observed at this time, as well as re information received by, by Mr. Sunuko. Um, I'm not I, 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 I remain unconvinced uh, that those statements are are uh, anything other than a manifestation of what might be a competency issue. Uh, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. Uh, uh, but, uh, to consider that request until I can determine whether or not he's competent. If I, if I, if I would remove Mr. Sanuko off the file, off the file, if I would remove him off the file based on a request made by a person who's later determined to be incompetent, uh, I think that would be a real issue. Uh, and so, at this point in time, I'm going to um, grant the request. What label? Excuse me. Yeah. For what label? Evaluation. What labels me incompetent? My intelligence, because I have a high IQ. No, no, no. Because that's that's that, that's not it, sir. There are different there are, there are different legal standards, but really it comes down to whether or not um, you can understand the nature of the proceedings at this time. That you have the ability. Oh, I, oh, I uh, the nature of the proceedings. That you, that you have the ability to assist your attorney uh, in your defense. Withdraw, to withdraw, sir. I do not. I do, I do not want my legal counsel. Actually. He did not reach out to the person that my relative, my relative told him to reach out to my father, and he didn't do that. My father was going to tell him that he, we wanted him to withdraw. He did not reach out to my father. He only reached out to Stephen Taylor. Stephen Taylor gave him my, my father's number, and he did not do that. So I would like him to withdraw from my case, sir. I have no, I have no, so he doesn't, he, he, he isn't competent enough for me, honestly. So I do have, um, in addition to the information that's been provided, um, I have a recommended for, recommendation for pretrial services um, that suggests that there are untreated mental health concerns um, and the nature of his criminal history and criminal contacts suggests that there uh, may be um, significant uh, mental uh, health, untreated mental health issues. So, Mr. Stringer, I've heard your um, concern at this time. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to grant your request until I get a better idea of uh, what your current mental health status is. So the request at this time is denied, but I will I will consider it again after an evaluation is done. Hey, so so who is judge on my mental health? Because you can't obviously be a judge because, sir, I'm with my law, sir. So first off, I am not, I do not acknowledge myself to be Lindy Stringer. The corporation in capital letters. No, sir. I appreciate that, and, and, and that's why I let you. I let you make a record, and I appreciate that. I just, you know, I, based on what I've seen, I, I disagree with your position right now, and we'll get you cannot evaluated. Disagree. You cannot. That's and that's enough for now. And then we'll, we'll have you evaluated by the. Um, uh, we'll have you evaluated by, by evaluated by the forensic center, and we'll go from there. Thank you for Mr. Zunko. Bond is continued. Uh, do we have a new date, Judge? Uh, we'll set it ninety days out. Very good. Thank you, Judge. Thank you.